Okay, I think we can get started. Um, we just pasted the link for everyone to put their name. Welcome everyone, this is SIG API December 5th. Um, so as discussed last time, um, today we can spend some time um, triaging the open PRs. Let's get started there. So, so the the first uh, PR uh, this was opened recently. Uh, I think this will be a small PR change to review. Uh, it introduces a new field. For, for the VM clone API. I think I can take uh, action item to, uh, you know, put a review on this. The second one, this is removal of some kind of uh, up, update test. Oh, this is just a test, do not merge. So I think we can safely ignore this, right? I think the author is just yeah. trying something out right now. Yes, it's it's DNM. It's uh, not merge, and it's like the draft. Okay. Okay. So this one, okay. Last time there was a action item to review this uh, proposal. Oops. I think I will take it as an action item to to do it this week. Yeah, there is a there is also uh an it's like it's also posted as an enhancement. So yes, yeah, yeah, I know. So it has uh, an enhancement and it has an implementation PR. And uh, okay. and there is also that uh, generic. Uh, I think this so this one is like a, a good example of to see if the we can learn from this uh, this attempt to to deprecate. Yeah. So I is and the generic PR was this one, right? Uh, feature life cycle. Uh, yes, I think that's like the they need to feed one it or one of the uh, one one and one another. I will say. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so I'll assign. I'll CC myself on this. Okay. Next one. Okay, so this one. It's also a draft. Are you? Are you? I'm not. I mean, the question is. Uh, may I? I'm not sure what to do with draft in this in this sense. Like. It doesn't have any LGTM and it's also a draft. So I'm not sure if it's a draft because it's still uh, under discussion or it's because uh, they don't want to load the the CI. Yeah, I it from looking at the PR, it looks like you know the description and the notes for review or everything is well filled out. So it might be a case where this PR is ready but just okay. forgot. 
So why is the API ch change the flag? Can you check the file just to understand? Because I remember someone talked about this and it was an internal API, not an external, but maybe I'm mistaken. Sure, I'll take a look. It's, uh, yes, you see, I, I, the web books. Yeah. Hmm. They added a type, uh, set guest CPU topology status. So I think they are changing uh, defaults here, and that's why they are, that's why oh, yes. this is being queued up in our uh, labels. So it's a default change. Yeah. Sounds like this is like a, if you if we have a document that describes what what does it mean to have an API change. Maybe it's a good idea to split it into, into a lot of this option, like setting defaults, adding fields, uh, stuff like that. Like then it's or changing the webhook uh, logic. That we could we could uh, list topics, and then it's it's like if someone tr wants to do one of these things, he can look in the in the what he can yeah. do or what he cannot do. Yeah makes sense so i think the api for this default change already exists uh, it looks like this pr does not introduce a new api right but it's calling it what do you mean it's it's just setting it uh, so the status is being set from from the spec it's yes. just a single uh spec to status conversion. Hmm. So by yeah, default I, I, go ahead. by default it sets the the status from the spec. What? <laughs> this is like totally totally <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's like uh, I want something and they immediately I'm saying this is what I want. It's like sorry. Yeah. I'm setting I want A and then I'm immediately saying that what I have is A, but who said that this is what I have? Why does it, why is it needed? Why the controller is not reporting it back? Doesn't sound right. It's the, like the intent is also the, the, the current by default. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think they need a place to store the last processed. The last piece of, yeah, the last processed spec. And they might just be calling this during uh, creation. Let me take a look. Well, they can, what do you mean? They can, they are. That's all. I mean, they are supposed to read it, and if it is, it's empty. They, this is the first time they fill it up, so they can do whatever they want. There, they can lie or they can. What? Why is it, it's done on the web? No, like, they you know, they want to process that information during a uh, live migration. So, live migration so, is only relevant once the VM is running. So, no, I, I think my understanding of the problem is that, okay, VMI is created, its spec has some uh, some resources, right? A, B, and C. Then it runs, something change changes those, those resources, A, B, and C. Then you want to call live migration where you don't want to migrate using the changed a, B, and C, but you want to migrate using the initial resources. Yeah, yeah, Could but that I'm... be the case? Yes, maybe, but still, I I would not. I don't think it's correct to set the status based on the spec, at least not at the webhook level. It, if the controller decides that this is his logic, which I think is wrong, if the, the controller says, okay, I'm uh, reviewing the, the object and I'm seeing this is the configuration and I'm now I'm setting the status. It's up to the controller to do it, not on the creation of the manifest. It can The manifest cannot be created in, with a default status. That's like, like I don't think it's, it's valid. The status is supposed to be as a feedback to the what exists, 
right? And I don't know if uh, if I'm clear about it. Like, I'm supposed yeah, to. Yeah, that to, makes I, sense. I, but yeah. we already have some fields that are populated during uh, creation uh, in the status. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I think that pending and things like that, which really are needed during creation time. No, they are not needed. They are just, uh, I think this is wrong, but uh, I'm not going to argue about it. But maybe if they give me examples that that Kubernetes are working like that, then it makes sense. But OK, well, it's not really uh, related do you to want the... To? I you can, want to take this? Are you listing the? Are you are you putting the list on uh, what what we are reviewing on the? Can you just put it on the? A list of things that we go over and I I look into it. Okay, sure. So Maybe I'll really just want... to go over it. Sorry. Yes. Just wanted to uh, point out that there is another field that is. Uh, another status field that is set by the mutating webhook which is the user id which uh, specify if the vmi will be rootful or non-root this is also in my opinion a bad usage of the mutating webhook i don't think it should have uh, set the status It's uh, it's it's like uh, I think it's a bad. Uh, it the, the argument is that it's bad to webhooks to update the status. That's it. I guess that's the, we can generalize it as that, and that's it. But uh, we can take it as as a side as a side uh, action to check it out. Okay, sure. So, um, Edward, what I was doing is. For the PRs that I was picking up, I was kind of seeing myself. That way, I have it in my inbox. Um, are you recommending that we maintain a list of uh, PRs that we have triaged uh, yes, separately? Yes, just on the yeah on the on the on the meeting note. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me do that. Okay, I'm going to um, retrofit this with the two or three PRs we already looked at yeah. uh, after the call. But at the end, I also wanted to show um, this. Uh, and it ties nicely into how uh, Kubernetes is maintaining this. I don't want to get derailed, but uh, that's something I have planned for today. No, we can do another one, or that's it, and then continue. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we were at this one. I think this is again related to migration. A new be new API being added. Okay, I think this one looks uh, valid. API change, uh, we should take a look at this. Put review there. Anyone has thoughts or interest in picking this up? So 
Sorry, I was muted. I wanted to say that we can classify as adding API add change, right? Or something like that. So, because. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. So I think we've looked at what uh, five PRs triage that today. I think we can go some more, but uh, let's circle back to other topics and then if time permits, we can come back to Okay. the PR changes. Yeah. Okay, so I have um, addressed most of the open comments here. Uh, the key change I've made is um, adding the implementation phases. So I recommend uh, anyone who wants to review, um, take a look at um, the new changes here. Uh, you know, giving an overview of how I'm thinking about this is that for this particular release, release 1.2, we will kind of beat uh, and make the process, um, you know, we continuously iterate and, and work on the process, what we have just gone through. Using that, we'll get some data points in this uh, phase the PRs will not be gated on API approval. Once we get an idea of how um, how smooth or how hard the pro like the reviews are, we can you know develop tools or automation for it and you know make this a gated process in in phase two. You know the gating will require additional maintain maintainer approvals and things like that. But at least for phase one we can get started just the way we have been doing in this call. And I don't think that requires any additional, uh, you know, approvals from, from maintainers. And then finally, phase three, I think in the past we have talked about a uh, lot of uh, upgrade tests and end-to-end -end tests that, that needs significant amount of work. Um, once we have, you know, gone through phase one and phase two, I think we'll, will be efficient enough in the, the reveal process that we can spend some more time, you know, working on that end-to-end um, -end tests. So that that's how I have bifurcated and staggered the, the implementation. Um, anyone who wants to, you know, add thoughts or feedback, please go ahead and review this. Sounds, sounds reasonable to me. Okay, awesome. So then that takes me to the next topic. So last, in the last call, there was a, a discussion around, you know, how, how Kubernetes does uh, the labeling or what's their process for, you know, following the API reviews. So I dig in. I dug into, you know, what Kubernetes does, and this is what I came across. So anytime a PR requires an, an API review, this is the label that gets attached uh, to, to the PR. Once this label is attached, it will, it, someone will bring it to the backlog. Uh, from the backlog, you know, they periodically triage the backlog and it gets moves to the assigned state. Then somebody goes, you know, takes a look at the PR. If changes are requested, then it will go to the requested changes um, section. If it is completed, then, you know, it will go to the completed section. And that's how they, they manage their, their triage board. The good thing about this... Yeah. How do how the how is it? I mean, the, this. How is it? How does it know to us to 
put it on the specific uh, column. It's uh, based on uh, some marking or like a label. No, I think this is not an automated process. A human mm, okay. um, triages this in their, uh, probably in their weekly calls or, uh, you know, async. I'm not sure. I couldn't find any automation that moves it into different states. One thing uh, I found, okay, so let's take a look at this, right? So this might be some kind of a GitHub integration. You see, it has moved from assigned to in progress. So whenever yeah, they move it, it gets reflected on the PR. So someone has triaged this, they have moved to assign, then from assign they have moved to in progress. And then finally, you know, eventually they, it will be moved from assigned to completed state. Yeah, okay. so what I was saying is that one thing I like about this approach is that they don't require a label for each of the steps that are involved in, in the flow of the, the PRs. So, you know, you can see Kubernetes uh, PRs are already filled with tons of labels. And so if you have label for each one of the, the step in this process, then the API review itself will own like four or five labels. So in light of that, I think it's good to, this process is really good for them. It helps them save those labels and you know move them forward. I'm not sure if we are ready for such a process. I think this might be good for us as well if we don't want to introduce uh, new labels for each step in the workflow. Like we'll have to go look at the projects and if it is allowed for, for our keyword project, then we'll have to introduce a new project. But apart from that, I think this process looks really nice. What do you guys think? Hey, it looks nice. It's uh, the question is, will we? I mean, how? Um, first of all, it's it's a technical question. If projects are even open on on this repository, I'm not sure. And if if we open it, uh, we need someone to be the admin of the the board or something. We need to check this out technically yeah and i'm not sure if they will i mean uh, it's interesting if uh, if everyone will agree to use it because there is also the i think there is also a jira project available but i'm not sure if it's uh, it is used publicly i don't know if there is a public instance of it so yeah I mean, that's fine. Uh, if we want to, if we really like this process and if we want to adopt it for our uh, call, even if GitHub is not available, like I know there are other uh, open projects like Trello or something which will allow us to, you know, do this manually. It will not be as integrated on the PRs as this board is. But I think we could live with that, you know. Yeah, but for might, yeah. but but why? But maybe we should. Uh, we can ask it in the community meeting. We can ask. Uh, we can ask if we can get uh, get this option. Uh, yeah, for, sure. To, to experiment with it. it's not that we we must use it. We want to try it out and see. Yeah. No, I I definitely think we should ask. But what I was suggesting is that if for some reason this is technically not possible, I think there are ways around it we, we could explore if need be.
ओके या आई थिंक दैट्स ऑल आई हैड सो गोइंग टू गो बैक Think. So this one was a test, right? We ignored this. and we have okay that's all hmm I think I don't have this PR. Okay. Okay. So I think that's all I have. Um, do you want to go look at? couple more prs i don't think like we already have so many prs on our plate for the next week not sure if yeah. um we'll be able to review more but can is it, is i just wanted to ask you is i saw that you went over the pr with the future life cycle is there something you want to discuss there okay to... to add this like uh, something that needs to be raised is important or we want to Ye yes yes attention to something give me one second let me open up that pr okay so i think you have already noted a couple of points and um issues for discussion here i think i was going through the sig api proposal and there are a uh, couple points there that we need to um you know connect it here so um that those are the two things i will add to the extension of this comment and if you have thoughts regarding these we can you know discuss them now so i think i have is there any reason why we want to introduce features in um z versions i think i think the the reason this one came up is because it's uh, there is a, some implication that Uh, we see now uh, from project that uses covert in down in they they use covert as the upstream uh, base of their downstream version. So in, what I mean is that we have we have experimental uh, APIs or experimental features introduced mm -hmm. in uh, in covert and and. when we do an experiment in thing we want some feedback right it's like we are asking for feedback if it makes sense if it's usable if someone finds a problem with it from the community now if if the version uh, from 1.0 i think we are releasing once a quarter or something like that uh, i'm not exactly sure but it's it's like a long period of time between the version so it means that let's say that a feature will will want to be first uh, examining on in the lab then examined in the production as beta and then ga right let's say it's the minimum time it's one version uh, each 
then it means that it will take a long, long period of time until we can put a feature in and commit to support it. And that that was not the case before we released once a quarter, like when we released once a month. So that opportunity could have happened in three, three months, in a quarter, like in one version time frame. So the question is, uh, can we, I mean, what is the problem to to release to release add features like this that are in alpha that are experimental in Zstream in Zstream versions? If it's experimental, then it's not supposed to affect the stability. But it's questionable because it it should not uh, cause stability issues. But and it should not be used by anyone unless they actually want it. But on the other hand, someone can say, okay, but you are touching the code, so you may, may cause the instability. So that's mm. that's why I, I raised it. Maybe the answer is no, we don't want it because it's you touch the you touch the code, so you have a potential instability introduced. Yeah. So I think that's that that would be my initial stance is that Z streams are supposed to be for bug fixes and we should keep it there. Uh, and I, I think the reason that, that 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 would be helpful and not cause a lot of dif disruption is when we deal with um, all those release branches and, and um, Git related changes, right? So I think Ideally, what happens is when we cut a minor release, we branch out to a different branch and then main gets tracked separately. All the development work happens in main. And if you want to indeed introduce a new feature, you will have to introduce it in, in that release branch. Then via, via the main branch, so I, I mean, you would already have to do it in the main, then backport it in the release branch, and then cut a release. So I, I, I think that the real question is, would the backport be allowed on on that release branch if if this is a new feature or only bug fixes are allowed on this release branch? And I think it. My answer is only bug fixes should be allowed just so we can, you know, be cautious about new changes going into release stable branches. So I'm, I'm not, uh, it was intentionally a question, but it makes sense. Like I'm makes sense that we'll have only things that are fixing, fixing stuff and not introducing new stuff yeah maybe maybe i should change this to another option that says that an alpha uh, can move to beta in the in in main for example that maybe is something valid or even in a stable branch can happen but that doesn't make sense but in 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 main it may may make sense like you try let's say you have three months and so in the first month or, or two it's in alpha and it is tested. Uh, some people are uh, trying it out, and there is a decision to move to beta in, in even before it is part of a specific release. That one, mm, that one can help. Like maybe, like we don't have. Uh, to I it. actually think that yeah, we should not move to beta without a release, and the reason. And I think this ties back to the same question that you have, right? Like why not introduce um, alpha feature fields to uh, a Z version? And I think there is a lot of other things that go along with the release, right? For example, the six scale, scale and performance benchmarks, they go um, at, at a release. So for features, for most new alpha feature fields, which are in GA, GA APIs like VMI and, and VM, 
there are performance and scale metrics that we track um, at at a release boundary and if a feature that is introduced in alpha goes into beta you really don't have a performance impact uh, measurement if that happens across a single release right uh, it would be really sorry sorry I, I didn't want to disturb but in in general i i will expect that the scale team will 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 put their input before the i mean during the before it is is the release is ga so before you have not about the feature i mean the release itself so before 1.2 for example when before you take 1.2 oh then i will expect the six scale to run all of, all of its tests and say that something works or doesn't work. But but if you move from, uh, I mean, I mean the discussion here is, can a feature be uh, introduced in a release uh, without passing all the steps? Like maybe directly is beta or directly is even GA. So that's like, uh, there is no rule today that avoids it. Like we, sh we, we have, the, the ones that created a feature have an interest to experiment with it, to try it on the customer, on a user that runs it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and eventually that's, I mean, this is their intention, but if the maintainers uh, think or they are proven, they give, someone is giving them proof that it is uh, enough to introduce it already as a, uh, for example, to skip the uh, experimental part and to go to directly to uh, trying uh, trying something on production already, like it's better for uh, I mean better. Then I don't know if we if it's not right. Why why I mean some features are are introduced as as G automatically, I think. Not everything is. Uh... So I think for for a product which iterates really fast, right? Uh, in it has not reached V one. I think what you are suggesting makes sense. Uh, for a product that has reached V one, I would expect that stability is. Uh, you know it counts much more in terms of the priority and having this guardrail where you go to alpha in one release you go to beta in another release really allows for that soak time some of the performance and scale numbers they are not really evident within within a week within two weeks right so what happens is that when six scale does its um, review if for you know for the last week you have seen a spike in some metric what you really do is because there is a lot of moving parts in in the cluster uh, you don't know if addition or deletion of a feature has caused this metric to go high you wait for some more time let's say two or three weeks and then even then, if you don't see that metric go down, then you go back and look at all the features that has went in and find that uh, culprit, right? So sometimes that soak time matters for stability. And that's why I'm, my thought process is that we should you know, allow minimum one release in alpha, but you know, uh, I, I, I do see what your point. That, I understand what you're saying. There is no yeah. harm in uh, iterating fast. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, and uh, you are absolutely right. But uh, in the end, it's uh, there is a balance because, for example, if someone comes in and says, I want uh, feature A, I think we need feature A, right? If, if, the, if we'll go, if this feature, let's say it's simple, a simple feature. Okay, to add another, we need to add a field and it's pretty simple. If we need to pass all of the, the steps, it means that it will take 
more than half a year to release the feature, which which is pretty <laughs> bad. It's like trying to say that I want feature A and then I the minimum to introduce a feature A is half a year. That's not that's like a problematic. So there are so I I agree that uh, in some cases, I mean the to be. 100% uh, accurate and sure we need to pass all of the steps but in some cases i mean i think it will be an overkill if we we'll, if we we'll yeah. it will take that it will take like so much time to get in something so this is why i'm saying it's it's per case thing and i'm not sure if we we are supposed to um, i mean we have the full story but uh, People can have shortcuts if everyone is in an agreement. Something yeah, like that. that makes sense. So I think for for features that are like that, right? So I think what what you are calling out is a categorization, whether feature needs to follow this life cycle, or you know it can take another route. I think for simplicity any feature that falls into this life cycle should have at least one um, release at a minimum. Then maintainers you know, can take a call whether they want to you know, make a feature follow this life cycle or have its life cycle of its own. But I anticipate like what are in terms of percentage, how many, like, what's the ratio of features that you think will follow this shortcut? I have, I have no idea. I, mean, I just know that some, uh, some of the feedbacks is that we are slow in some of the things. Like, if someone wants now uh, an ability to, I don't know, an ability to add a parameter to the, to the VMI storage or interface which is pretty simple. Uh, they will want it in the next release if it's something that we can commit to and say, okay, that sounds really simple. We can add it, there is very little risk. And if we cause problems, we are uh, committing to fix them. So they will just want it in the next release. So in some simple cases, this, it's, it's funny. You don't even call it a feature, you call it like an enhancement of, of an existing feature. But if it's something big that you are not sure about the API and maybe the solution that you came up with is not even what the original uh, user was looking for, or what the original uh, designer was looking for, then it makes sense that you will pass all of these stages because it's it's big, it's complicated, it can have uh, more much more risks. So it's I think it depends on it, and I don't know which ones you classify as uh, shortcuts and which, you no, know, you just need to trust the maintainers, I guess, that's it. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so uh, I will try to, I, I guess this this line is about uh, uh, making it rest, uh, less restrictive and uh, having more uh, ownership on the maintainers to have a decision not to limit them in these stages because they may see it as a they may they may see it as something that they are forced to do and they don't want to or something like that or to limiting. Uh, I can try to add something that tries to make it yeah. uh, softer with uh, obviously with agreement. It's like not something that uh, we will expect people to go over all these stages and if they if someone wants to make it something shorter and she can explain why and then I mean if he reasons for it and it, the reason makes sense then then they will, will just continue on. I think yeah, that's something makes sense. Yeah. I also recommend that you know if you can find out a, a couple of examples from the past where yeah. you know a feature had had a valid reason to you know make this shortcut. I think that will really help make the case. Uh, yes. Yeah. You're right, yes. Okay, uh, moving on, CI and end-to-end -end restriction. I need to go uh, to drop in two minutes, so 
Uh, okay. okay. Sorry. Let's check. Uh, so which one you wanted to go over? Uh, CI and end-to-end -end restriction. Ah, uh, yes. It's like, okay. Uh, yeah, I think this makes sense. I, I, although this sounds like an in implementation issue, I don't know if this should go into the, the design proposal, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh, yes. It's like uh, we can we can we can add recommendation. That's it. But yes, you're, the problem here is that if everyone adds like a million features, and these features, for example, you add ten alpha feature in a release. Uh, you are not, I think you are not supposed to burden the whole project with your experiments. So put your experiments on a, on a non-gating job and that's it. Don't don't cause the, your experiments to block the whole project pro progress. Yeah. That's that's the point here. I think yeah. we can, yes, you are right. We, we, it it sound, sounds like a it's very implementation data, so we can just recommend uh, something and that's it. Yeah, to consider. makes sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will add the couple other points from a different PR on the list here. We can discuss that as well. Okay. Next Thank time. You. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Bye. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.